Guys, welcome back to Lab Cyber. So today's video is going to be a follow-up to the last video that I made where I talked about how LastPass, the password management company, uh, got hacked. Now, in that video, I mentioned that I typically do not use any password management company. I have a manual method of creating my own passwords. And one of my subscribers asked, okay, what would be my manual method for creating and managing passwords and that's what today's video is all about today's video i'm going to show you how i create manually and manage my own passwords i don't use lastpass or dashlane or any one of these other uh password management systems so in general uh you can either use such a management system or create your own passwords manually the obvious advantage of going with the management system is that it's very very convenient and all you really need is just one uh, master password and then the management system will automatically create passwords for uh, your websites or whatever kind of accounts that you're, that you're trying to uh, create. The advantage though of doing it manually is that you're not going to rely on third parties and if the third party gets hacked, uh, you're not going to be uh, affected in any way. So let me show you how I create my own passwords manually and manage them. First things first though, is that thankfully when it comes to creating uh, very strong passwords, uh, it's actually quite easy. There is a formula for creating strong passwords and I'm not sure if you've seen this meme before, but people often think that to create a very strong password, you, you know, you need to do so many things like, uh, you know, it involves like a gang sign and uh, a hieroglyph and the blood of a virgin, things like that. No, things don't have to be this crazy when it comes to creating strong passwords, thankfully. Uh, all you really need are four main requirements. One would be at least eight characters. Some would argue now that, well, password cracking has become so much more advanced, you need more characters. However, studies have shown that eight characters is still a pretty good standard. And then of course your eight characters you must have numbers and letters at least one capital letter and then uh, one symbol at least so this could be like the at symbol hashtag and so on these are typically the four main requirements for creating any kind of uh, strong password so essentially of course when you're creating your own password you want to make sure that they are strong now the actual password management system itself there is one significant issue that a lot of people often make, and that is they use one single password for all their accounts. Like they will create like a very, very strong password. And even though it's very, very strong, the issue here is that you're using the exact same password for all your accounts. And this is a major issue because if that one account gets hacked, well, guess what? The hacker is going to have access to all of your accounts. Now, I typically like to categorize my passwords into four main groups. So you're going to have a password for your email accounts, one for your social media accounts, one for banking, financial, anything involving money, and then others. Now, what I mean by others, uh, I'm referring to websites where you have to create an account in order to either read a blog post or do something that isn't that important. So many websites, like I said, they typically require that you sign up in order to make use of their service or do something. And one thing I would always recommend is that you should have a secondary email account for such websites. I typically use my Yahoo mail account for such websites. So if I log on, if I go to a website today right now and there's a blog post or an article that I'm interested in, I'm trying to read that article, but then they say, oh, in order to read the rest of this article, you must become a member, you know, sign up today, blah, 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 blah. I would typically use my Yahoo Mail account for such. So I would highly recommend that you reserve your primary email account for the most important websites, like your social media accounts, your banking website, things like that. Use your primary email for such. And then for the other non-important websites where you're going to use a service maybe once, maybe for a certain period of time, you can use your secondary email account like a Yahoo account and of course that Yahoo account will have one password uh, associated with it. Now, when it comes to creating your actual passwords, you need a formula that you can easily work with and that you can remember the structure. It's very, very important that you remember the structure for that formula. Now, the hacker is very unlikely to know what your formula is 
unless you tell them. There is this fear that, oh, if I have a formula for creating my passwords manually, then the hacker can figure it out and then they will have access to all my passwords. That is not true. Unless you actually tell them that, hey, this is my formula for creating my passwords and that's when they will be able to get access to all your passwords. Also, keep in mind that whenever people get their passwords or email accounts hacked, it's not usually a personal attack. It's not like the victim was a specific target in most cases. What happens is that hackers would go after companies and they will try to hack into the database of the companies and then the victims are typically I typically would have accounts with such companies. So the company is the actual target, the victims, the customers who use that company I mean, the specific targets that the hackers are going after. So uh, keep that in mind. Now, to give you some examples, over here, take a look at what I've come, uh, I've come up with right here. Now, now these are not my passwords, so uh, don't, don't worry about that. But I want to give you kind of like the formula behind how I have created five passwords for five different accounts. Notice that all these passwords are 10 characters. They're all 10 in number. The first four characters are letters. And the first letter of this four is capital. You can see in mail, face, tweet, inst, bank, right? Also notice that the first four letters have some sort of association with the account the password is meant for. For example, my email account, mail. Facebook, I took the first four letters from Facebook face. Twitter, I took the first four letters from Twitter, which is tweet. Inst, Instagram, I took inst, the first four letters. And then of course, my banking or financial website, I took the words bank. So right there, I can never forget. I know that, okay, these are the first four letters that will come for this particular account. And then notice that after the first four letters, we then have four numbers. Now, these numbers should not be random. These numbers should be numbers that you can easily remember. However, they should not be numbers that are close to you, like your date of birth or the year you were born or things like that. For example, 1885 could be phone numbers that I got from a particular movie. It could be the numbers I got from a particular video game or a sport or a cooking show, something like that. So that's where you should get your phone numbers from. Now, the phone numbers, in all honesty, they could be the same for all your passwords. As long as the first four letters and then the last letter and then the symbols are different in the other, in the other passwords, you should still be fine. However, if you want to go even deeper, you can use the four different numbers each time for all your passwords. Then after these four numbers, you now have one additional letter, small, a small, small, small letter. In this case right now, because I'm using a Gmail account, I use G. For Facebook, I simply use the next letter after face, which is B. Same thing with Twitter, Instagram. And then for the banking app, I simply use A. In this case right now, I use Bank of America. So A for America, that's why I've used A right there. So again, that letter should be one that you can easily remember. It could be the next letter for the actual uh, account name that you're using, the account that you're working with, or it could be some sort of a letter that represents whatever account you're trying to sign into. And then finally, the symbol. Email, whenever you're sending emails, you always use at, right? That will be in the address, so I used at there. Hashtag is like the universal symbol for social media. So I've used hashtag for my Facebook and Twitter. I've used at for Instagram. And then for my banking, I've used the dollar sign, right? So right there, this is a typical formula that I've given you. Mine is different from this, but it's kind of like around the same kind of idea. So this is how you can create a formula for your passwords manually. Again, make sure that all your passwords are the same in length. Unfortunately, we're human beings, we're not artificial intelligence or computers. So if your passwords all had different, uh, well, all different in length, that could complicate matters quite a lot. So you could end up forgetting your passwords quite often. But again, as long as your passwords are the same length, and then you have your formula, first four uh, letters or first four numbers even, 
and then one capital letter and then a symbol things like that uh you would hardly it's going to be very difficult for you to forget uh, what the passwords are i haven't forgotten any of my passwords so far and um yeah one more thing i should mention is that you would be fine if you decide to use the same password for all your social media accounts so you can have one password for linkedin instagram uh, uh facebook twitter and so on now obviously it's better to have different passwords for these different accounts right but again as long as that password is very very powerful and then also you enable two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication whenever possible on your social media accounts you should be fine i have two-factor authentication enabled on all my social media accounts so if anyone is trying to log in from a different uh, ip address or a different country they would have to either impute uh, uh, numbers from a text message or a pin number basically two-factor authentication will come into play immediately that's another way how i try to protect myself uh, from getting hacked so if you want to you could use the same password for all your social media accounts although i would recommend that you use different passwords but if things are going to get way too complicated for you you can use one single password for all your social media accounts and then of course make sure that you enable two-factor or multi-factor authentication uh, whenever possible one last thing i want to mention before i round up is that if you haven't subscribed to this particular service have i been pawn.com i would highly recommend that you do so this is a free service they keep track of email accounts and passwords that have been breached in any kind of cyber attack so i would highly recommend you come in here right now you can provide your email address you can even provide your passwords and see if such a password has been breached before you also have the option of going to notify me right in here so you can add your email address tick that you're not a robot and then click on the notify me of punish so if your email address gets breached in any kind of cyber attack you will be notified so this is a great and a highly recommended service that i would suggest that you take advantage of just to further improve your uh security for your password so this is basically a presentation on how i create and manage my passwords manually if you have any questions or comments i'd love to hear from you if you enjoyed the video do give it a thumbs up share the video with anyone whom you feel might benefit from it if you're new here to the channel my name is alex i make content around cybersecurity, cybersecurity news topics content and so on so if you enjoy this kind of content be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified whenever i upload a new tutorial stay safe out there and i'll talk to you next time cheers